Take it off an A.
Well, hello, everybody. It is a another balmy day in the DMV. I am Steve Hauck, and welcome to Living on Music here on ZTV Live. Um, you know, again, I hope everybody is hanging tight, doing okay. This, it's it's a frigging exhausting, guys. It really is uh, what we're all going through. But everybody's finding ways to find the joy. I know uh, we are here um, trying to play music as well. But boy, we have some extremely special guests that I'm going to get to. Um, any minute now. Um, just first, I got a, a little news to to share. Um, basically, um, uh, we want to uh, give a shout out to uh, the National Independent Venue Association. Um, it's NIVA, N-I-V-A, S-S-O-C.org. They are behind the Save Our Stages um, um, initiatives and the new act that has been put forth by Amy Klobuchar, um, who, who uh, is trying to get direct funding for venues, and they really, really need your help. And they so please go to nivaassociates.org uh, and get your um, um, uh, self into the petition. It doesn't take any effort, and these people, these folks need names and and numbers to try to get these acts passed. They only have about a month to go, so that would be wonderful. Also, we're really, really um, behind the After Dark Fund on Facebook. Um, the After Dark Fund is part of um, helping local musicians with their, um, um, their getting by as well. And you can go to the After Dark Fund on Facebook as well as um, Snap Merch and, and, and help them out. And you can get some cool swag too. So um, go check out the After Dark Fund on Facebook. And to see some of the bands, um, likely including the one, the amazing group we're going to see this evening, um, we, we, we always, I, I always like to push live DMV music on Facebook. Um, you can see a lot of places that these folks are playing, a lot of bands that are playing, um, where they're playing and those virtual tip jars, you guys are a lot of, a lot of good cash for them at the moment. So please go and, and support some bands. There are a lot of bands playing some great music all, all around, uh, the, the DMV right now. Um, some club, some places are opening as 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 I've told you, and my my buddies at the Birchmere um, are you know are trying to go kind of a little bit half full tilt, and I'm really excited that the Birchmere is open um, this Friday, July 31st. The Road Ducks, um, who have been around as you guys know for very very long, um, are going to be playing at the Birchmere on Saturday. It's the English Channel, and on Sunday it's the Country Gentleman Tribute Band, and then my buddy um, Ron Holloway's band is playing on Friday, August 7th. So remember. Um, be smart when you're going to these gigs. Um, it's great that they're able to open the doors and hopefully have people stay safe. Um, also wanted to talk real quick about classicalmovements.com, which is an amazing group in, in um, uh, Alexandria. They have live shows going on right now, you guys. Um, live music outside in the, at the rectory in the Secret Garden. It's one of the prettiest venues that you can imagine. And they have one this uh, Saturday. It's called Prague Comes to Washington. And it's with um, an incredible group of people, um, uh, an evening of art, song, and opera. And it's top-notch folks, um, alumni and faculty of the Prague Summer Nights Young Artists. And they're going to be doing some Beethoven to celebrate his 250th anniversary of his birthday. So that's that's some live music outside, you guys. And then, again, uh, Classical Movements has Vox Virtual, which is an August 22nd through 29th live a cappella festival online. The best a cappella um, musicians that I have ever heard um, in my life. And they are from all over the world, all different kinds. So uh, check out classicalmovements.com. And uh, you can find uh, a lot of this information about some of the great live music that's going on um, with them. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my buddy Surf. Um, as, as all you guys who have lived in the area know, uh, Surf Colwell is uh, one of the legendary radio DJs and radio aficionados that this area has ever seen. Um, he's got a great book called Surf's Up, and it is just a fabulous collection of his life and not only the, the hanging out and meeting and, and knowing people like Lowell George and Tom Waits and Nils Lofgren and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Springsteen, but also testifying on the Hill with Frank Zappa when there was the issues with the uh, what they called porn music, uh, Tipper Gore and stuff. They were trying to bring down music a lot. And um, Surf's, Surf's book is a wonderful, wonderful ride through the, the musical life of a not only a sweetheart of a guy, but also an amazing, amazing mu mu music, uh, musical mind. Um, so check him out. You can see it's on musicplanetradio.com, musicplanetradio.com, Surf's uh, A Rock and Roll Life. Um, the first time I saw this band, um, I was at the Stroke Comeback Center um, for their Christmas party. Um, my partner, Suzanne's brother, Perry, um, suffered a stroke um, in 2005 at the age of 43. It was a massive stroke, and um, he has come back 
through his um, work with the Stroke Comeback Center and also just a lot of different areas and a lot of different things that he's done um, and has been able to kind of get back into um, himself. And it's it was but it really hit hard. And we went to the Christmas party to celebrate all the all the people that are that are coming back from this and the Stroke Comeback Center. And there was our get there were our guests tonight playing and we loved every single minute of it. I think we were sitting in the front row over to the over to the stage left and really loved every minute of them. And they really, really are are advocates of that group. And there's a reason for that is because one of their founders and one of their dear hearts um, also went through this and had a stroke years ago. And we'll talk to him tonight about that. Um, but in general, this band um, is, is full of award winners. Um, they have a swath of blues and folk and country influences. Um, although based in DC, their roots is something that I, that I want to talk about with each of them a little bit tonight. Um, there's rural, there's farm, there's a coal miner family. Um, there are mountains of West Virginia and Southern Virginia to the hills of Pennsylvania. And these guys have been regaling audiences with country bluegrass, Americana, and their original tunes for what's about 12 or 13 years now. Um, I am really, really um, excited and privileged to bring these guys on tonight and thank them for getting out and sitting around and playing for us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome King Street Bluegrass. How's everybody doing tonight? Good, good. You guys, you're, yeah, see, there's some thumbs ups and things. And and uh, Nancy Lisi, you've been my, um, my contact. So welcome uh, to you guys. It is a great thrill to see you again. Um, uh, again, I, it was wonderful seeing you at that party. I know you guys have been playing uh, for them for a while, but let me ask you, Nancy, to start off with how you how you been doing, getting through this quarantining and and kind of you know staying home and stuff. Have you been handling it okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I stay busy all the time because I work for uh, WAMU uh, Bluegrass Country Radio. And, yes, you do. And so I, I fool around with that. We do a lot of charity things, and you know we've done a lot of Zoom events where we, Donnie ran it, and uh, what was that last one for? The 25th Project, which was the homeless in uh, Woodbridge. Uh, uh, you know, I, I besides being raised in uh, with my coal miner uncle. Before that, um, my dad uh, had me down here on the streets of King Street, and uh, right. he actually owned a realty office on the, on King Street. Uh, he used to take me out in waders when it would flood, and he wouldn't let me wouldn't let my te feet touch the ground, but he he would let me uh, you know walk me around, and uh, everybody knew him. And it was right across the street from Tiffany Tavern. Uh, oh, who knew wow. who knew that w we would and a lot of times I would look across the street and just remember that building because uh, Roger and me and, and Robert so frequently played there. Oh, I bet. And, and, you know, I'm sure some of your uh, your friends and pals in the venue business are taking a hit right now. Uh, anybody you want to shout out to that you guys kind of frequent? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's uh, uh, Fred uh, Nelson. Uh, with, uh, you know, his band, you know, I know they've taken a hit. You know, when, when Tiffany's closed, even before COVID, there were some venues that closed, weren't there, Roger? Yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a major bluegrass venue. We yeah, lost. yeah, everybody. Yeah. Circa Blue was scheduled to play there and got canceled the day that she closed. Yeah, yeah. That, that is an incredible part of this. And that's why, you know, at the beginning of every show, I talk a little bit about the the National Independent Venue Association and stuff, and they're really trying to help people because there's some people who, if they don't get that that support, they're going to be in trouble. Let me introduce. Uh, let me go across the the spectrum here of the of the band just to to uh, to kind of say hello to everybody. Um, right to your to your immediate right is uh, Donnie Faulkner. Welcome, Donnie. It's so nice to have you on the show. Um, nice behind, to be here. Behind Donnie is Robert Swain. How you doing, Robert? Great to see you. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. There is Captain John, the the Sailor King. Uh, right there. How you doing, man? Welcome. Oh, um, when's the last time you were out in your boat, Captain? Well, this afternoon. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Um, right next to you is that Rob Waller, I think, next to you on banjo. How you doing, Rob? Good, thanks. Great to have you, man. And then it is the uh, the Harp King, the har Harmonica Wizard, Roger Hart. Welcome, Roger. Hey, good to be here. Uh, I'm so glad to have you guys. I know uh, this virtual world, you can't wait to get out and play uh, in front of a whole bunch of people. I heard Richard Thompson did a show this weekend, past weekend, in front of about 500 people. And I'm thinking, hmm, oh. uh, they were potted and he did a beautiful show. But um, I was like, wow, it is, it's still a wild world. Anyway, 
again, Nancy Lisi, um, it is it is such a thrill to have you guys on. You know what I think we're going to do? Before I get started talking to all you guys about a little bit about your lives and stuff like that, let's play a little music. Why don't we kick something off? You, uh, what, what would you like to start off with with this evening of uh, music on Living on Music? What would you like to do, Donnie? I want to do Dixie Pig. Oh, Tell okay. them about it. Tell them about uh, this song, Nancy. Yeah, uh, she... The, uh, actually, I, I had my children at home about four doors from the Dixie Pig, uh, Arthur and I did, and uh, uh, and the song is outdated because just l about eight months ago, the Rite Aid closed that was there. I call that karma. Wow, that is. Kick it off, boys. Yeah, let's do it. place where the right aid is that used to be the dixie pig got around with one best place to eat anytime you go you get a treat don't ask nobody else just look there for yourself the dixie pig has said goodbye and left us all to sit and cry where will we get our barbecue our bacon egg and steak on the grill don't ask nobody else just look there for yourself go ahead. <laughs> going south on a long, long haul are victims, too, of urban sprawl. At the Dixie Pig, they all took five. Now pedal to the metal down 95. Don't, Don't ask nobody else, else. Just look there for yourself. Well, see that place where the ride it is. That used to be the Dixie Pig all around Route 1, the best place to eat. Anytime you go, you get a treat. Don't, Don't ask, ask nobody else. else. Just look there for yourself. Don't ask nobody else, just look there for yours. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Oh, my God. And you guys sound crystal clear, so yeehaw in the virtual world. Oh, we got world. some nice cool. clappers here in the background. That makes us feel good when we have our friends clapping. That's right. We have an audience. Yes. Oh, uh, I just I loved every second of it. Um. You know, again, Nancy, talk a little bit about uh, being raised in a w amongst coal miners. How was that as a how was that as a as it, a life? It wasn't what people thought it was. Yeah, tell tell me a little bit about uh, your, uh, your my uncle. My uncle started di uh, digging coal when he was 12 years old. Wow. And he was raised in an orphanage. Uh, both my mother's parents died in the flu epidemic of. 1918 oh. and so my mother and my uncle and all 12 of them kids ended up in orphanages and that coal mine got him out of the orphanage when he died he had a beautiful home he had black lung he had a pension but the black lung never bothered him he was 85 years old he dug his own septic tank he oh. he swam across a monongahela river you know, and and uh, to tell you the truth, it's like uh, what Hazel Dickens used to say. I love the danger. I love the dark. Those wow. people drank together. They they had a lot of camaraderie and, uh, you know, the coal mines. Yeah, they were dangerous. But that was what people in Pennsylvania and I still have people up there. That is what uh, they relied on. And unfortunately, now that the mines are out, what's happening is. They weren't, the kids weren't taught any skills. They were all going to go into the mines and make good money like their, their parents did. Guess what? You can't anymore. 
No, you can't. And that, boy, what an incredible story that is. You, uh, real quick, you guys, you've gotten um, a couple of really nice comments, one from a board member of the Stroke Comeback Center thanking you guys for for being here. And also uh, Sue Kenny um, said her husband ate at the Dixie Pig since the 1951, since 1950s. So um, that's the, it says my mother and her family were from PA. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, let's talk to Donnie Faulkner a little bit. Donnie, um, you're, you're hailing from West Virginia. Um, tell me a little bit about how bluegrass kind of evolved into your life. Um, back in that time era, this was back in the early 60s, uh, we used to have a little community fair. And this is in the town of Williamsburg. So this is not the famous Williamsburg, Virginia. This is Williamsburg, West Virginia. It's the geographical center or geographic center of Greenbrier County, West Virginia. Right. So it's in the plateau between the Allegheny and Appalachian Highlands. And one night we went down to the community fair and the people that were playing on stage was an individual by the name of Lester Flat and a banjo player by the name of Earl Scruggs. Whoa. <laughs> and this is at a little community fair with about 120 people, probably counting a couple of rabbits, groundhogs and cattle, to be honest with you. <sighs> wow. Um, and God bless them for coming to those small communities like that because it was transformational for me. I just, I heard the music and I thought, wow, I'd love to be able to do that, but really didn't start that until I was uh, probably closer to 19. And I actually, uh, you'll hear, you'll hear me talk about this later. I actually joined a little country band. It was called the Front Porch Swing. Right. Uh, but just uh, in that mountain area, there's everything, songs of the heart, talking about family, about tragic romances, about mother and Father, that's kind of the heart of bluegrass music, and so it sure. just kind of stuck with me, and I still have a love for it. Oh, I love that. My, I told Nancy this. I think my one of my I'm a, a music writer for the last 20 years, and one of my highlights of my writing career was interviewing Del McCurry uh, and talking to him at length about his entire life, including some great stories about Flat and Scruggs and uh, and things like that. But what a what a legacy uh, he has had has left and also what a legacy the music has left. Robert Swain, it is so wonderful to have you there, my friend. Um, yeah, thank you, Nancy, for moving the mic. How are you, how are you doing, Robert? I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. Um, um, I'll tell you, uh, it's, uh, I, I got uh, back into the business as soon as I could after my stroke. Right. Uh, but uh, th this band uh, was uh, there for me. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. And I remember uh, being at the Stroke Comeback Center at Christmas party and knowing a little bit of your history and seeing you up there singing, man, it gave me chills. And I didn't even know you guys that yet. And I just it was I'm, it's so wonderful to have you back again. My family uh, has been through that exact kind of thing. You um, were raised uh, by Quaker parents and were uh, in a farming world, weren't you, as a kid? Yes. Yes. Um, actually, I was. Uh, I was an abandoned baby, uh, and I was, uh, at the age of three, I was adopted by a Quaker farm family. Wow. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, my, my dad really wanted me to take over the farm, and, yeah, but I wanted an education, so I called him up one day and said, uh, hey, Dad... Uh, I, I've, I've, I, I want to go to law school. And he said, why the hell would you go and do that? <laughs> wow. And that's where you, uh, when you attended uh, Guilford College, I guess, in North Carolina. And I, that's, I, that's where bluegrass music came into your soul. How did that happen, um, Robert? Well, just uh, riding down the road with the radio on. The uh, the country stations at, in those days played uh, about uh, every th four or five songs was uh, Mac Wiseman or Flattened Shrugs or the Stannery Brothers. Right. So so uh, that's that's how I uh, 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 that's how I um, um, uh, got introduced to the music. Right. Uh, so um, I was uh, I was going to stool down there. By the way, I I I loved uh, being waved on the farm, but I didn't like the work. Uh, I I was uh, hoeing a, 
a, a, a long, long road uh, on a day like this. Wow. I, I started to hear voices. And, oh, they, that. and they said to me, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. You know, and Robert, I'm going to be very frank with you. I mean, you you, you sound wonderful again, having my one of a, a family member of mine and the same thing. It sounds like you've you've managed to kind of get through the, what happened to you. How is stroke? Get, um, you know, we've got a bunch of stroke comeback center folks on watching with us tonight you guys are such a, a big part of them how have they helped you kind of get 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 back to where you know to closer to where you 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 wanted to be and, and where you want to be and to be able to kind of get 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 back well uh for for one thing uh i uh i uh, uh have a um uh a, a cellular police session uh, uh um uh, every Monday, and I, I have gotten some really good friends uh, that I made there. Uh, Al and and Ike, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> That's great. Hey, it's, you, you did some shout outs there to the Stroke Comeback Center. You can't beat that. But it's oh, yeah. they've, uh, they've been instrumental for Perry. And I know um, I know it's really given given you a, the ability to kind of, again, work through the, a, a very difficult thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, sound glad you sound fabulous, man. I can because again, I'm very familiar with it, and so great to have you. Um, Roger, uh, let's go. Let's go to Roger. Let's go all the way over to Roger for a minute. Um, Roger, you know, he, the Alpha Alpha Dog Blues is your other band. You're you've been playing harmonica for a long time. Tell me how you got into the harp. Well, I mean, originally. I, I was brought up in New York City, and there was a uh, place called the Fillmore East. I don't know. I you know, know it well, absolutely. I'm a big Allman Brothers fan, so yeah. Okay. Um, well, I used to go there and see Paul Butterfield play harmonica. He was a great harmonica player, blues yes. guy, and that inspired me to start playing harp when I was uh, 15. And then I was in a couple of bluegrass bands in New York City. You wouldn't think of New York City as a bluegrass place, but there's a lot right. of really good pickers there. Right. So, I spent a couple of years playing with a street band. We used to play in a village, in a Greenwich village. Oh. I learned a lot of fiddle tunes. So, you know. Oh, that's. Mean, yeah. Aside you, from. Yeah. You used to go to Fillmore East? Oh, yeah, all the time. Matter of oh. fact, I used to. I would only go if I could get the best seat. So I'd go to first day that tickets went on sale, and the best seats in the house cost $5. No. Oh, my Sit God. In the first three rows. That was Yeah. Great. I mean, um, I got, got yeah. to interview. I got to interview Greg Allman before, and uh, a couple wow. of the other guys in the Allman Brothers, and and the Phil, the Fillmore. You, you know, I talked to, obviously talked to Greg before he passed, and that really is one of the great moments of his life. And I mean, those guys played till six in the morning. People were literally falling asleep because they wanted to make everything so perfect. But um, but I I love hearing the harp. And tell me about um, you know, uh, uh, your current um situation with these guys. How did you get involved with uh, King Street? On the street. I saw him playing on the street. I don't know. If, did I just like see you on the street? That's yeah, how we met. Playing. I just started playing. Nancy said uh, if I wasn't going to stop, she was going to call the cops. But that's <laughs> why we became friends. And, you know. Oh, I, I love it. You had you had a beautiful touch with the harp, man. The harp the harp kills. Well, before we talk to uh, to the uh, the other two members, to Rob and Captain John, I think another song is in order. What do you guys think? Let's do it. That's what we. That's what people are yearning for, and I love to ha love to have you guys play. So yeah, what are you what are you gonna roll for us? What I've asked them to do here, I've just kind of threw one on them um, since uh, you were talking about Robert and Stroke comeback, and I think this is a good song that kind of showcases just how far he's come. It's uh -huh. a, uh, to my knowledge, one of the maybe the only song that was co-written by Hank Williams Sr. and Bill Monroe. So fellas, wow. pick it up. Call 
Fantastic. That that is that it kind of highlights a cross section of you guys. Um, what a what a wonderful wonderful song. And that is a Bill Monroe and Hank Williams Senior collaboration, Donnie. Yes, sir, it is. Wow. You and, can tell the blues in that song. Oh uh, yeah, I bet. Oh, uh, I bet. That is that is spectacular. I loved every second of that. Captain John, hey. you play a be- play a beautiful fiddle, my friend. How are you? Oh, I'm good, man. Tell, tell me about your life with the fiddle and with bluegrass. I know you got a, a, a pretty uh, storied uh, history in the in the music world. Just give a, give us a nutshell version of it, if you would. I'd love to hear it. Well, I come from the great bluegrass state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> but, uh, but I went to West Virginia to learn to play the fiddle. I was very fortunate in that I lived alone. And I could play all day long. And I actually spent a whole fall, winter, and spring Saw on the fire, uh, stoking the fire, and saw on the fiddle, and wow. uh, there were no people around, so that's a good thing because the dogs would howl, the cats they all left. <laughs> I mean, I had a horse, and yeah, man, they just get as far away from me as they could. It was an awful thing listening to somebody learn the fiddle. I'll tell you. That. Oh, that is classic. And yet, and you've uh, you've had some runs with some some pretty well known folks. Oh, I've had a long, unremarkable career, but I got to <laughs> tell you, this is a you know, I've been cruising now for 16 years, and uh, this is only a summer gig for me because I head south in the winter. I don't do these winters anymore. And, uh, right. And you are a, you are a licensed captain, and you have a sailboat, right? It's not one of those motor things. I mean, you got a motor on it, but it's a uh, sailboat, we're sailing. right? Yeah, we're uh, that's where you where you where are you uh, docked? Where do you keep it? Well, I'm in the middle of the river, Potomac River. I sit at anchor. I don't go to one of them marinas. That's like being packed in a little RV park. I. I got a lot of space around me. Unfortunately, I don't have any shade. Pretty <laughs> no AC. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, uh, I love the fiddle, man. That was a that was a real neat showcase song. It sounded wonderful. Um, talk a little. I like to talk a little bit to the banjo man, Mr. Swain, uh, Mr. Waller. Um, Rob, how are you, man? Doing good, thanks. Um, tell me a little bit about you. You you come from south of Charlottesville. Um, you had a, an uncle who I think uh, was a was a pretty big uh, influence on you. T- talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I'm actually from here. I was born in one okay. of the few D.C. natives. I was actually born in D.C. and lived in this area. But both okay. of my both of my parents were from okay. are from um, 
where you're talking about, uh, yeah, down there south of Lynchburg, uh, right, out near Alta Vista, Virginia. Alta Vista, right, yeah. And in tobacco country, back wow. in the day. Right. Uh, but, but I made several trips down there all the time. We were going down there to revisit family because everybody else stayed in that area. Right. So over the years, I was constantly going down there. And my uncle Gerald Johnson, he played guitar and played a lot of country and some bluegrass. But being up here, I was always playing. I was into like classical music and rock and roll and heavy metal. But when I went down there, you know, we played country. And so over the years, um, it just kind of rubbed off. And then he had a banjo that he had that he didn't play, but he loaned it to me uh, back in high school. And then right. uh, I just kept going down there and jamming with him. Everybody encouraged me for some reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe against their better judgment, but yeah, it just oh. kind of stuck after that. And so, and I just met people around here to different jam sessions and bands. And um, then when Robert had the stroke, they needed a banjo player to to fill in. So I've been helping out ever since. Well, that's fantastic. I'm sure you were you were um, you, you, your presence has really been welcome, especially um, it's now it's a it's kind of a big six piece or two. You guys are you're you guys are hitting it. But I love the banjo, man. It's a you know, it's not an easy instrument to learn and um, wonderful sound. Uh, Nancy, I wanted to ask you real uh, uh, quickly about your fabulous horse life. Um, I um, I was a I've been a television producer for 37 years. Um, and one of my early jobs about 25 to 30 years ago was at Monticello Raceway. Um, mm -hmm. To, uh, with the harness racing show, um, with with our our sports guy Gary Sussman and the guy who worked in the that ran Monticello, so uh, harness racing actually was part of my life for a little while. Tell me a little bit about, about how you jumped into the horse world. Yeah, I've been over to Monticello before. I, I've yeah, never raced, I've never raced there, but I uh, I went there uh, 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 back in the early 2000s and. Uh, it was it was really a dump by then. Oh yeah, and it was it, it was funny because when we went, they had kind of upgraded it from being a previous dump, and um, we had to do a TV show there and make it look nice. So we've of course we carved out the uh, the nicer areas. But how did you get a you know to be a horsewoman? Uh, I had a horse in Pennsylvania, but when I left and came back here in my senior year, I went to Hayfield High School, and I met my girlfriend Carol Stewart. And Carol lived uh, in um, near near uh, Bellhaven. She lived not too far from where Arthur lives. Right. And uh, uh, she, I opened the uh, door to my locker and I said, "Man, this smells like my horse's stall." And she said, "I've got a pony in my backyard." Oh, and my. I said, "Get out of here." She said, oh, "Ride wow. the bus home with me, and and you can see him." So we started listening to Elton John together. We started drawing pictures together. She got me horses. She bought me horses. And she went to the track first and then got me interested and bought me horses to train. I had a world champion that belonged to Carol, uh, Sarah's double. It was a, a, a Maryland state champion. She was undefeated in uh, 20 starts. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yes, and uh, her first 20 starts. And she was quite the horse uh, in Maryland. Then later I had, uh, I started working with a guy from Elk Ridge. I, I worked with a lot of different people. And I started painting horses on the side. I would paint uh, portraits for, for people. So I, I did that. Wow. Too. Well, it was you, all, I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut, like they used to say. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we could do we to make a buck, Arthur and I would do it. Sometimes we didn't have a car. Sometimes, you know, we could just barely get by, but some, we, we always managed. Arthur was touring with Van McCoy, and then Van died, and uh, wow. he's doing our sound today. And, uh, yes. And so, Arthur's, and Arthur, Arthur's reputation precedes him as well, for sure. Um, we had talked prior to the show. Uh, he's a musical director for the great Cleve Francis, and I was going to get my Birchmere debut to sing uh, at the Birchmere about yeah. behind behind Cleve, and it's one of those, you know, one of those, um, you know, things well, next we've year lost. It, it better be good. Next year, the yeah. pressure's on, brother. Well, uh, you know, and I, I know I, I was just repl I was just uh, filling in for someone, and I, I'm I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it because um, it's he's it, gone. It's, he went. He went. No, to, no, no. You'll be back. Maybe. Oh, yay! Thank you. I can't wait. It, it, it was um, you know, for a midlife cover band singer for the last 14 years to sing at the Birchmere, and I know all those guys there very well, Gary and John and Michael, and all those guys are dear, dear friends. But anyway, um, uh, Donnie Faulkner, you're the recipient of a pretty neat award um, that that goes to bluegrass frontmen. Tell me about that. 
actually, it's a country award. It was nice. the Red Foley Music Award. Sweet. As I'd mentioned, I was raised in the mountains of West Virginia, and I wouldn't say we were dirt poor, but in a town full of poor folks, we were called the poor Faulkner children. Wow. So people always let you know your place. Right. And so <laughs> I heard I heard about this college in the mountains of Kentucky called Berea College. Right. And it basically was a work study program, allowed you to work through, and I went there and uh, one of the alumni of that particular college was best friends with Red Foley and wow. basically started this award in his memory. And I was the recipient of it in 1987. Very proud to be a recipient of that award. Well, fabulous. You're, you're, you're wonderful pipes to boot. Yeah, I love that. Um, guys, I think, again, we're here to hear the King Street Bluegrass uh, kick some t bluegrass tail. So uh, how about another song? What are we going to hear? Well, we're going to do one for you. This is an original. Yeah, and uh, this is one that I wrote. Um, it's called "Rusty All the Time," and and yes, it is for sale on the Stroke of Luck album on our website. Fab fabulous! Is that KingStreetBluegrass.com? Nancy. Dot com. Yes, KingStreetBluegrass.com. Yeah, everybody, go check it out. It's a cool site. Go check out these guys. Um, here we go. There's an original from King Street Bluegrass. So this is how you come up with a song. Somebody gives you a phrase, and you're like, "Oh, I like that phrase." You write it down, and then you build a song around it. Love it. We well, have my friend named Rob came over just to pick a tune or two. Said he did not have much in mind. Asked what I want to do. Well, I hadn't picked or sang in weeks, not a single line. But I guess it wouldn't matter much Cause I'm rusty all the time Once I was a young man Strong and in my prime I went out dancing every night And drank a little wine Well the years have come and gone Lord may sure have been unkind And now I'm just rusty all the time got my first guitar when I was 17. I joined a little country band they called the Front Porch Swing. We played in bars most every night to 1 or 2 a.m. But I cannot recover the way I did back then. Cause once I was a young man strong and in my prime. I went out dancing every night and drank a little wine. Now the years have come and gone, Lord, they sure have been unkind, and now I'm just rusty all the time. Well, once I had the strongest legs, I'd climb the highest hills. And now I get cramps every night, Lord, I cannot lie still. But when I hear a good bluegrass song, I still want to dance a step. But only for a minute, then I stop to take a rest. Cause once I was a young man, strong and in my prime. I went out dancing every night and drank a little wine. Well, the years have come and gone, Lord, nature has been unkind, and now I'm just rusty all the time. I used to practice yoga had great flexibility, but now I'm stiff all over, except where I want to be. Well, guys, you may think that's funny. Well, I used to think so, too. But if then you live long enough, you'll feel the way I do. Cause once I was a young man, strong and in my prime, I went out dancing every night and drank a little wine. 
Well, the years have come and gone, Lord, nature have been unkind, and now I'm just rusty all the time. Yes, now I'm just rusty all the time. Yeah, Rusty All the Time from uh, Stroke of Luck, right? Uh, that is from your Stroke of Luck record. What a beautiful That's what from a, the Stroke of Luck, yes. And it said you, you were feeling humorous when you wrote that song, I noticed in the notes. Uh, either humorous <laughs> or candid. Right, yeah, either one. Sometimes they're both. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ask, um, Robert, what, did, what do you think of that record and the fact that these guys um, seem to be so deeply supportive of, of what you've been through? Oh, uh, these, these guys... Uh, were with me every step of the way uh, as I went through uh, surgery and uh, as I uh, 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 recovered in the ICR. Um, <laughs> I got to tell you, uh, oh, <laughs> we, uh, my first trip out of bed, uh, Roger and Nancy were there and, uh, uh, and, uh, um, Roger. They said March. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said March. So, so I said okay. And then Roger said, "Wait a minute. What you pull out?" <laughs> yeah, I had a recording on my phone of uh, Double Eagle. Yeah, yeah. We learned it in but Ireland. Nancy <laughs> taught me from the Great Duress in Ireland. Oh my song god! Of, and I had it recorded, so I played it, and we marched around the ICU. It's like a du John Philip Sousa surprised. thing. Oh man, that's the luckiest ICU in the in the country. Of that it's like that, a conga line. All the nurses were behind him. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Dun, 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 so, dun. so so we said uh, we said uh, we apologize for connect, uh, right. creating a, a stir, and the nurse said these people have nothing to cheer about now. They do. Oh, that's that's fabulous. Um, I, I again, anybody who's uh, all, all the people that are on and we got a wonderful crowd, um, go to KingStreetBluegrass.com and, and pick up Stroke of Luck. Um, how, can they can they get copies right off the site? Yes. Good. Again, this is a band that also um, we you know, if I had two hours, we'd go and talk to each of these guys and and what they've been doing um, to try to you know get through all this. Um, but again, any musician that's that's out there, no matter whether it's their full-time job or part-time, is is hurting right now. And these guys are really on a roll. Um, where before this started, Nancy, um, you know, uh, you guys were probably fully booked for a while too, uh, hoping to get back out live. I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. We uh, we ended up uh, everything got canceled. Right. Do you have anything coming up, um, you know, doing any virtual things or any anything outside socially distancing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Coming up, we're going to do something for Glen Echo because uh, we're trying to help them out. They they uh, had their um, carousel got vandalized. I'm sure you saw it in the <laughs> yes, news. Yes, I did. I did. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and do uh, play for tips. And uh, and then, uh, you know, we're going to split the proceeds with Glen Echo. And that's uh, coming up on the 30th, is it not? Yeah. Yep. Oh, great. So we're, and we're going to live stream right from here. And we're, you know, going to go ahead and do that for them. Because oh. they, can't, they had to cancel everything, which really hurt them. I'm sure it did. And anybody who goes and vandalizes a carousel has to have bigger issues than that. That is... Um, or you know they they were under the influence, but that is just ridiculous. Well, th uh, that is going to be that's going to be a treat, and we'll I'll be sure to uh, to promote that through uh, through our various uh, social media channels, and, and people can check you guys out then. Um, look, I'm uh, I can't thank you enough for for coming on to Living on Music, Nancy. I know we've been talking for a, a few weeks about this, and it, it it frankly from a from a from a show standpoint has been fabulous. You guys have sounded great. It's been a real real fun thing. And even with the Del Fest in the in my in the back, I wish we were all outside seeing shows. But um, can we? Can I? Can you guys uh, send us out with a song? And um, and and that that would that would be an honor. Cool. King Street Bluegrass, everybody. Um, again, thanks so much to Nancy Lisi, Donnie Faulkner. Robert Swain, Roger Hart, Rob Waller, and the grab and Captain John Ace. Um, you guys are, are a special bunch, and um, I'll be looking forward to getting out and seeing you in person once we get through this um, insanity. All right. Hey, thanks, right. Steve. We look forward to that. Thanks. We we sing about two things: church and drinking. 
and <laughs> we were going to do a drinking song, but we decided we'd go ahead and do a church song instead. Oh, fabulous. King Street Bluegrass. Mm. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. Blessed reunion, oh what a blessed reunion! When we're together over yonder, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. No more sorrow in that city, no more sorrow in that city. Jesus prepared a place in heaven, and they'll be shouting on the hills of God. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory, and they'll be shouting on the hills of God. Well, now it's time to make your preparation. Now it's time to make your preparation. So stop and make your reservation, and they'll be shouting on the hills of God. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. Yeah, thank shouting you, on Steve. the hills. Oh, thank you very much once again, Nancy, Donnie, Robert, Roger, Rob, and Captain John. You guys are fabulous. Again, you guys, um, remember that these these guys are going to be on live this Thursday night, July 30th. It's part of the uh, Glen Echo Park Partnership for the Arts and Culture, and they're going to be helping Glen Echo kind of uh, get their, themselves back uh, up and running a little bit. And also they were vandalized, which we just talked about. So uh, uh, what a wonderful experience was of that. You can watch it right on their King Street Bluegrass um, Facebook page and also the Glen Echo Park Partnership for the Arts and Culture. Nancy and company, thanks so much for being a part of Living on Music tonight. You guys are fabulous. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. I'm going to do a close as you as you guys um, stay 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 quiet for a moment. That would be fabulous. Um, again, um, King Street Bluegrass, you guys. dot com is where you're going to go see them, and these guys will be be, be out playing all over the place once this thing um, has um, you know go, gone away. So uh, very, very exciting to go see them live again. Uh, and thanks to their amazing support of the of the Stroke Comeback Center. Um, it is a personal thing for me as well as the band. And um, so uh, again, go. Uh, to the stroke, stroke comeback center dot org, I believe it would be um, uh, online um, and or just Google Stroke Comeback Center and you can check out what they do for people who really need their support. Coming up 
this Monday, a week from today, actually, on uh, Living on Music, one of the more special shows we've had with Jim Ebert from Cancer Can Rock, um, an incredible organization that helps musicians who are dealing with cancer have the chance to come in, record their song. Um, they shoot the high-end video of the recording, and there is some beautiful stuff on cancercanrock.org, um, and you should go check that out, too. And uh, not only will it be the founder, Jim Ebert, but it will also be Brennan Loveless and Jerry Darby will be performing a song apiece, and they are cancer survivors, and they are exceptional musicians and do two fabulous songs. Really, really neat. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful show, and, and join us on, on, on Monday for that. A week from Monday, one of my best and longest lasting friends, um, who is also an exceptional worldwide um, known musician, Todd Jones joins me. Uh, Todd and I go back 45, 50, 40 years into high school in Connecticut, but Todd has has really run the gamut of, of music over his life. His, his uh, instrumental stuff is world renowned and, and um, is used uh, as music beds all over the world, but he's also a composer, a musician, and right now, for the last number of years, has been a teacher at uh, the Encore Performing Arts School in Egg Township, New Jersey. I was supposed to go this Saturday and sing with his people, with his students at these amazing events. I've done it two years in a row. We were supposed to do it at the Lizzie Rose Music Room right in Egg Chip Township, one of the great local music venues in the country. And of course, boom, uh, nope, can't go do that either. In fact, New Jersey has said, if you come from out of state, you have to quarantine for 14 days. So I would have had to stay up there for two weeks, but couldn't do it. It was just a little bit of a risk. So Todd will be joining me on the 10th. August 17th, we're really, really happy to have the founder and the president of what I talked about a little earlier, Classical Movements, which is the Alexandria, Nita Helms, Alexandria-based premier music touring company that helps musicians, uh, orchestras, choral groups all over the world. They're known in 145 countries, and they are an exceptional group. It's not just about booking and helping um, make have, having these musicians have their plans set, but they are crossing cultures. They're trying to blend people. I think they had some Syrian refugees singing with the Cincinnati Symphony one, one time recently. They are also behind the Sounds of Hope and Harmony concerts, um, which are, again are at classicalmovements.com. And this Saturday is Prague comes to Washington and celebrating Beethoven's 250th birthday. So if you want to go, hurry up. I, it might be sold out, but you can check it on the website. Uh, and they do it in this almost idyllic little garden right at the rectory right in, in Alexandria. And it's live music, people. So that's really exciting. But Nita will be joining me to talk about her company and classical movements and also about Vox Virtual, which is the acapella online uh, festival that's going to be uh, happening August 22nd to 29th. And we'll be talking about that. And then on August 24th, it's Ron Newmeyer. Now, if you know music in the area, you know Ronnie Newmeyer. He is the musical director and founder of Bandhouse Gigs, as well as Newmeyer Flyer, which are the ultimate album and tribute um, shows in the region and in, largely in the country. Some of the best musicians of this area get together and recreate sounds of different musicians, different eras. I was fortunate enough to be asked to sing at the Fillmore East, uh, Fillmore East, I wish, the Fillmore in Silver Spring uh, to do for the David Bowie tribute. And, and again, as a midlife cover band guy to sing at the Fillmore, it was an astounding experience. And then I did the same thing at the Elvis Costello tribute at the Barnes. And that's all Ron Newmeyer. We're going to talk about Newmar Flyer, Bandhouse Gigs, his history with music, and also hear a couple songs, hopefully, from some of his better musicians that have uh, played in his shows. So we've got some exciting stuff coming up on Living on Music over the next month. Please join me every Monday night at 7. Uh, real quick this week on ZTV, um, which, again, you can find right on um, on Facebook at uh, ZTV. Just um, search for it. And also now on YouTube, you're going to be able to see all of the ZTV programming um, uh, when it comes out. So uh, go to ZTV on YouTube, subscribe, and you can see all of our stuff on YouTube. It's really exciting because you have to kind of live, you know, get up to, to a level to be able to do it up there. And we're, we're on YouTube now, which is exciting. Um, tomorrow Night at 7 is, is a great show. It's called Reading, Writing, and Ralph. Uh, Ralph Peluso um, welcomes tomorrow uh, Robert Hoppenstadt, who has a timely book called The Shelter. And um, as Peluso, as Ralph said, um, it's about art imitating life in a thriller about a deadly virus. So there's a little bit of a, a, a story um, that could distract you a bit from the news that you're seeing every day. Um, and and um, he's going to talk to Robert about that on Wednesday at 7. Jane Hess Collins has her 10, qu 10 questions with show and she's got Mary Lee Anderson of the Senior Services of Alexandria. Any of you guys who know or have parents, uh, elderly, relatives, friends, yourselves, 
um, you know what this is, how tough this has been and how scary um, for, for senior citizens. And, and so um, we're going to hear a little bit of, uh, about kind of the, the status of senior services in Alexandria and kind of what they're doing to, to help elderly care. And then on Thursday, it's the Virginia Amos Show. This, this week's guest is going to be Mara Benner of Four Directions Wellness. So um, tune into ZTV. Lucella Flaherty is all around every day. Um, it's a great, great chance to see some of the good news and good things that are going on like King Street Bluegrass, like the music that I try to bring you uh, from local musicians here and their stories. Um, but it is a really, really um, neat experience. So be a part of ZTV and come on and check us out. Um, Living on Music is a production of Zebra Press. Our executive producer, the great David McClure, who, who runs the ship um, back at the studios. Mary Wadland is the publisher. Um, you can visit the Zebra at zebra.org, um, as well as on our Zebra Press Good News Facebook page. Um, if you haven't checked out the latest edition of, of the Zebra um, newspaper, newsletter, the really the newspaper online or in person, you can still get it delivered. Now, I, I say this every show, but I can't start my day without reading the paper. I, it's usually the Post and it's also the Zebra. Um, there's a great edition in the July 2020 edition. It's just a fabulous kind of overview of things that are going on. And it's not the stuff you're going to see on regular newspapers or television shows, news, local news. Some really cool stuff about people you may know, people you may live next to in the region, and some really good stories about how to kind of help you through this this time. And then when it's done, good stories about getting past it all and having fun. So check out the Zebra. Um, there's 125 newspaper boxes you can get it from, and it's all over the uh, 400 locations in grocery stores and restaurants. So once again, I want to thank the great King Street Bluegrass. What a treat. Uh, how great were they? How great did that sound? How great did it feel to, to have some live music in your lap at least? And again, this Thursday night, go to their Facebook page, check out um, their Glen Echo um, show. Um, it's going to be very, very uh, exciting to see them play a full show. Um, once again, I'm Steve Houck. I'll see you next Monday night at 7 um, with the great Jim Ebert from Cancer Can Rock. Until then, remember, everybody, what you can do, whether it's for one hour, one day, rest of your life, be the good in someone's life. Take care. That's right.